Imagine fighting a war for decades after it was finished. You may think only a madman would do it, but these four Japanese soldiers fought for almost 30 years after World War II ended with a very bizarre story to share. Following Japan's surrender in 1945, there were many soldiers who kept fighting on, either due to their militaristic indoctrination or because they just didn't receive the news of the war ending. Initially living off the mountains of Lubang Island in the Philippines, four fellow soldiers carried out guerrilla activities against the locals and kept the war going even after Japan's surrender. The first time they saw a leaflet announcing that Japan had surrendered, they thought it was a trick by the Allied forces, who had taken hold of the island they'd been told to protect with their lives. I think the locals tried to warn them, right? Yeah, but it's kind of hard to talk when you're being shot at. And later on that same year, even more leaflets were dropped by air with a surrender order from General Tomoyuki Yamashita. And they ignored it again! Blasted Allied propaganda! Much later, in 1950, one of the four soldiers, Yuishi Akutsu, walked away from the others and surrendered to Philippine forces. So now they were down to only three men, and after letters and family pictures were dropped from an aircraft urging them to surrender, you can probably guess how the three soldiers reacted. Another of the soldiers was later shot in the leg during a skirmish with local fishermen and then killed afterwards by a search party. It was not until 20 years later, in 1972, that another one of the soldiers was killed by the local police, while he was burning nearby farmers' rice fields. As the last man standing, Hiru Onoda bore the duty of defending the island to his last breath. And a couple of years later, he met Norio Suzuki, a Japanese man who came to the island in search of, quote, Lieutenant Onoda, a panda, and the abominable snowman. What the Yeah, I didn't believe it at first, but it's what their history books say. Sounds like they were having way too much of those forest herbs. Well, after they became friends, Onoda still refused to surrender. So Suzuki returned to Japan with photographs of himself and Onoda as proof of their encounter. After seeing the photos, the Japanese government located Onoda's former commanding officer, Major Yoshimi Tanaguchi, who had long since surrendered and become a bookseller. And on March 9, 1974, he traveled to the island and finally met with Onoda to fulfill the promise he had made back in 1944. Whatever happens, we'll come back for you. Onoda was thus relieved of his duty, and after fighting World War II for 30 years, he finally surrendered. Talk about commitment bias. Hmm? Just goes to show how long they'll fight for when they believe it's for the right cause.